Hey everyone, welcome back. Henrik Fiska shows off Ocean Fiska SUV Rotate and Scream Infotainment System. So we've got a really great article here from Inside EV. So let's see what they have to share. I think this feature is really cool. I think it's really necessary, especially in EV vehicles, because obviously you can see that Tesla used to use a portrait display that used to be in their previous vehicles but now tesla has fully switched to a landscape display and i think it works really well especially if you're in your vehicle and you want to watch youtube videos you want to watch movies with your kids family members no now some people would say well we have a phone that's portrait all, all phones are most likely portrait so what's uh, what's the big difference with a car well the difference is that your phone you can actually rotate it yourself if you're going to watch a landscape video while say with a polestar display you can't rotate it. So what Fisker did, they put a rotating display in their EV. And I think Polestar should have went with a feature similar to this or the exact same or go with a fully landscape one. Because personally, I don't think that portrait displays in vehicles, in EV vehicles are going to last for too long. Eventually, more companies will go to a landscape display, especially to get everything under one system. When Tesla has majority of their vehicles, 90% of their vehicles on the road using a landscape display, it makes it extremely easy for software updates and for usability. Also, those display would be prioritized, so it just makes more sense. So this is the video in question, Henrik Fisker just showing off. So this is the video in question. I won't play the music in the background because we don't want to get copyrights, but we will just play the, the video itself. So there it is. That's the rotating display in action. Really easy, really seamless. Wow. I think this was a great thing for them to do. Give users both options. I can think of many cases where users will want a landscape display and I can think of few cases where users might prefer a, a portrait display. And you know, fundamentally, a lot of things, a lot of opinions out there is that um, the UI and UX for electric cars, um, computer systems are not all that good. So I think it's fair to say that we do have a long way to go to improve the design of ui and ux um, car systems seriously we have a long way to go so this is one of the fiscus oceans many features it's one of the coolest features interior features in fact so of course it allows so of course it allows for both portrait orientation which is more suitable when the vehicle is on move and is used for instance need to display maps as well as landscape mode which makes more sense when the vehicle is stopped and you might want to watch video. Just like I was saying before. So I think this is Henrik Fisker's way of saying, listen, we are very different from other EV manufacturers and we're willing to do things differently. We're willing to innovate and we're, we're not afraid to add new features to these cars. Features that might be controversial, features that people might not even expect. So one big takeaway from the video, it is in fact that Henrik Fisker didn't actually touch the screen, which means that it's just a running demonstration, not the actual Finnish infotainment software that Fisker buyers will experience. So when he was asked for the larger map screen to be displayed, he doesn't touch the screen and the change is done by someone else controlling the screen off camera. So the software that you're seeing in video is not really the, the finished thing. They probably still have a long way to go. Now, the, the good news is that these vehicles will start manufacturing in November, towards the end of November, I believe. But starting manufacturing does not mean that the software is fully ready or fully complete. Software can be updated at any time, any time during the year, any time during the decade, any time during the day, month, week, whenever. So they can start shipping these vehicles out without the official software. And of course, vehicles like this will have bugs, they will have software issues, but over time, there can be updates, over the year updates to, to improve these usabilities for users and the buyers. And in other recent news as well, Fisca may accelerate US factory search due to new EV tax credit. It appears the Biden administration efforts to bring more EV manufacturers into the US is getting automakers' attention. Fisker plans to begin production of the Ocean Electric Crossover SUV in November 2022, a few months back. CEO Henrik Fisker hinted at the potential for eventually bringing ocean production to the U.S. Now he's considering accelerating these efforts. The new U.S. federal electric tax credit will provide up to $7,500 towards the purchase of a new EV, and customers can take advantage of the tax credit 
at the point of sale. However, most current electric cars in the US due to some new rules. And these new rules have driven everyone insane. It's really driven anyone to confusion, to be honest. So it just says that the Biden administration and those who work to construct the bill added a requirement related to North America manufacturing. In addition, there are new rules pertaining to domestic sourcing of battery. The goal is to bring EV manufacturing to the US and decrease reliance on other countries, of course. So you get a more incentive on your electric cars if you build them in the United States. That's why Polestar wants to build the Polestar 3 in the Volvo factory in the United States because it makes the car cheaper for the customers. The customers can get a huge tax relief, over seven grand to be exact. So Volvo, Polestar, they want to build EVs in the US. It's actually a really good idea. Volvo is already building cars in the US. They're already building EV cars in the US and normal cars in the US. So, so when the Polestar 3 starts to be built in the US, you know people are going to really like that because it's going to bring down the cost almost by $10,000, almost. So naturally, Fisker is considering the same thing because right now the Fisker Ocean will be built by, by Magna Styri in Austria, I do believe. And as you can tell, that is in Europe. So for now, they'll have to ship these cars to the United States. But what if they had a factory in the United States? Obviously, previously, months ago, there was talks that they could be in a partnership with Foxconn, but that seemed to have fell apart. So now the question is, who can manufacture these vehicles for Fisker in the United States? Hopefully they do find a manufacturer because that's what everyone is looking for these days. But most importantly as well, more companies need to start building new factories. Of course, it costs billions of dollars to build these gigafactories, but it will pay off in the long run, especially when you get incentives and help from the governments. So that is it for this video, ladies and gents. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to see more. And of course, I'll see you in our next video.